Hey, it's the Stick and Hack Show. This week we have Thomas Malchow from Trainfully.com, a repeat guest of the Stick and Hack Show. Plus, we talk about old golfers and how they are still playing golf at 103 years old, Mike. Mike also gives us a uh, lesson on uh, on how long he wants to live, and the answer is shocking because it's not long. It's not 103. <laughs> it's the Stick and Hack much. Show. It starts right now. This is the Stick and Hack Show. Conversation, discussion, debate, and golf talk from a stick, Mike Ryan, and the hack, Adam Grubb. Boys, you are up. Hey, everybody. Welcome in. Stick and Hack Show. I'm your host, Adam Grubb, the hack. That's Mike Ryan, the stick. Mike, how are you? Super duper. Great. Um, all right. We've got a big show uh, on tap here as we, uh, first of all, this is Masters Week, um, and we don't really, we're not really going to talk about it because every other outlet in America is talking about the Masters, but the Masters is this week. Very exciting. And um, obviously, yeah. we don't know who won. We don't know anything about it other than it, it should be great. If you're listening to this beforehand, um, awesome. If you're listening to it afterwards, so-and-so won, and it was an incredible tournament. <laughs> If you're listening to this months later, I'm definitely I'm definitely interested to see uh, what uh, Augusta is going to look like in the fall. I you know what I'm excited TV, about? I'm TV. excited about Augusta in the fall, but I'm also excited about Augusta with no fans to see the course yeah. in its entirety. Yeah, uh, I think that's been one of the better things about no fans and watching golf this year yeah. has been you can actually see the course and you feel more like you're a part of of a normal golf course. They never look normal when they've got fans because everything is tunneled in and you just see the fairways and you don't see the course, you don't see everything. Right. So I think that's really cool. We have a huge show uh, this, this uh, week and today specifically with uh, Thomas Malchow. He's the owner, co-owner and co-founder of Trainfully.com, the future of golf, fis- golf fitness. And uh, he is on the program today. Uh, by the way, a return guest. This is his second appearance. Our first one. Our first return guest. Yeah. And he is uh, he's court ordered. <laughs> but he is... Back with us here on the Stick and Act Show. <laughs> Quite possibly the greatest golf show in the free world from the greatest golf club in the world without the course. Presented by Bent9, premium golf apparel for on and off the course. Become a free member of Stick and Hack and get exclusive deals, discounts, and giveaways from great brands like Bent9, proud sponsor of the Stick and Hack program this week. Uh, Mike, let's go first up here. Golf in your twilight. Now, you're, you're, you and I are not super old, but there are times when we golf and we're like, yeah. man, my back's a little stiff. My, you know, my body's a little, sure. right? Imagine when you're in your 80s and you're playing <laughs> golf, right? That's in 40 <laughs> years from now. But we all hope to be playing golf well into our, into our late years, yes. right? Uh, and there's some incredible stories of very old people, very old golfers who have done incredible things uh, in, in the space. Now you've got family members, uh, and we've got members of the club, and we see people all over the, all over the place. And and there's there's great great stories about golf and how the joy it brings you forever. It's yeah. one of the only sports you literally can play. Maybe tennis at a very slow rate, but only one of the sports you can play in your 80s and 90s. Um, do you hope that you're playing golf when you're 80 years old? Uh, yes. I'm not sure I want to live to 80 though. Wow, that is breaking news. <laughs> My God, <laughs> my boy just comes in hot with a take. He doesn't want to live. Well, okay, well, so whatever the, we'll the maximum years you want to live, yeah. would you like to be playing golf up Absolutely. until that time? Yes, <laughs> yes. Until I am no longer amongst the living, I would oh, like to man. be able to play golf. Talk yes. about bringing an entire show down <laughs> to the ground. I'm just um, being, I'm just being right, realistic, well, man. Good luck to you, Mike. Yeah, I don't thank know you. what the hell Appreciate to say that. to that. Yeah. Uh, golf in your twilight, the oldest golfer to shoot his age. Mike, the oldest known golfer to shoot his age was 103 years old. <laughs> Read that again. 103-year-old Arthur yeah. Thompson of Victoria, British Columbia. Thompson was playing in the Uplands Golf Club in Victoria when he accomplished the feat in 1972. 103 and uh, shot his age. Yeah, that's, of 103. Uh, that's pretty wild. Like, uh, to even leave the house at 103 <laughs> is like, I feel that's, like that's, that's like an accomplishment. That's 23 years past your, yeah. your lifespan. Yeah. Yeah. Most strokes below one's age. How about the uh, record for beating your age by the most strokes as far as uh, records have, have kept the overall record belongs to John Powell in 2017 at the age of 86 Powell fired a 64 That's 22 strokes better than his age in the final round of a Southern California PGA section senior tournament. 
The tournament was played at Indian Springs Golf Club in Laquina, California. Uh, Powell lowered the record by one, besting the 21-stroke difference established by 93-year-old Ed Irvesty, who in 2007 posted a 72. Blew it out of the water. Seven Sunningdale Golf Country Club in London, Ontario. So I'm, I'm seeing that there's uh, many Canadians that are on this list here so far. Yeah, I know. Uh, which uh, will hit our, our guest here in just a second. Okay, I wonder, um, wonder how that happened. I don't know. Maybe they've all been on trainfully.com <laughs> for the last 40 years up in Canada. Maybe it's a Canada-only right. thing. That's right. Um, so yeah, we've, we've got uh, John Powell at the age of 86, firing a 64. On the pro tours, the most strokes below age record is held by major championship winner and Hall of Famer Bob Charles. Yep. And I, I've always said never trust a man with two first names. But Bob Charles, hey, Mike Ryan, <laughs> hey, you idiot. In 2012, <laughs> when Charles was 76, he carted a round of 66, 10 strokes below his age at the, at the PGA Seniors Open on the European Senior Tour. Previously, the record was held by Jerry Barber, the name we, I think we all know, who in 1994 fired a 69 in the Champions Tour Kroger Senior Classic, nine strokes below his age. Now, shooting your age is one thing, but killing the record by 10 strokes right. is unbelievable. Yeah. And these guys are, are, I mean, 76 years old. I know. And, you know, those guys are sneaky. The older you get, the sneakier you are on the, on the golf course. Well, for sure. Because they're only hitting at 130, 140, maybe 160 yards, and you're well, like, right? I mean, Jerry Barber. Not the t- yeah, the, those tour guys are still hitting. I it guarantee you, Arthur Thompson, who's 103 years old, yes, you think for he was sure. bombing at 280? No, no. No chance. No, no. No he chance. Was a, he was a hit a hybrid down the fairway. He had a guy, I'm sure. I, I bet he had one club. He needed a Sunday golf bag. Yeah. Yep. He probably had two clubs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, now let's talk about uh, one of the most famous old golfers, and that's Sam Snead. Sam Snead of the 1979 Manufacturers Hanover Westchester Classic, the longest name in the history of tournaments. Snead was 67 years, two months, and 21 days old at the time. And it didn't look good for uh, the slammer when he opened the tournament with a 76 to make the cut for the PGA. But in the second round, Snead rebounded with a 70 to stand at 146. Those at 147 and below missed the cut, so Snead made the cut on the number. He shot a 77 in the third round, 74 in the final round. And uh, he was 13 over par, so he finished 74th place. But yeah. he was, uh, he did make the cut. And at age 67, that was a PGA Tour record. 67 yeah. years old, making a PGA Tour cut. Yeah. Um, that's, why uh, slamming, that's why he was slamming, 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 slamming Sammy. Uh, Joanne Carner is the oldest golfer to play in an LB, LPGA tournament. Joanne Carner held, uh, holds the record as the oldest golfer to play in an LPGA Tour event. The golfer they call Big Mama. <laughs> That's yep. quite, quite a nickname to, oh, yeah. to come to fruition. A Hall of Famer who won 43 LPGA tournaments, was 65 years old, 11 months and 21 days, when she teed it up at the 2005 Kraft Nabisco Championship. She shot 79-79, missed the cut, but she was uh, the... And, and in fact, her last victory was 20 years earlier, in 1985. Yep. Uh, in, 19, in 2004, she made her last cut on tour. So the oldest golfer to make an LPGA cut... Also, Joanne Carner. She made her last cut at age 64, 26 days, 2004 Chick-fil-A Charity Championship. She finished 90th. Uh, the oldest golfer to make a cut on the PGA Tour was 67 olds when, when he did it. And it happened in, uh, in 1970. Sam Snead was also the golfer there. And that record still stands. So all those records, and, and those, those, those are some ages. I mean, that's your, your mid-60s, oh, yeah. 70s. Yeah. And they're out there competing. They're playing. They're breaking records. They are, uh, and they're playing a game at a high at a high enough level yeah. to to be competitive. You you don't. That's not something that that you that you see often. No. And even today, Mike, they're talking about in the seniors tour at fifty. Do they still have it? Can they still play? And and fulfills well, every single time he tees up in the senior <laughs> tournament, he wins. But Phil's uh, Phil's an outlier there. But majority of these people. When you think of playing golf competitively or even at, at how you used to, at, that, at those ages, it's remarkable. Why do you think that is? Well, I mean, I'd say some of it's probably genetics, but mm. that's like specifically Sam Snead because I don't think he exactly lived a clean life. No, he lived a good life. <laughs> he lived a great life. <laughs> Sorry, I excuse was... me. <laughs> lived a great life. Yes. But yes, I don't think he was uh, in the in the, the physical yeah. shape that yeah. most but are in. But I do think s- there's, there's got to be some component of them taking care of their bodies and 
and staying and staying active number one and staying out there and not uh not giving up on on the dream yeah. of of playing competitive golf i think that's probably one of the biggest things you just got to want to be able to do it right well i just imagine the guy at 103 years old what the hell is his name um no, i can't find it <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. arthur thompson <laughs> Imagine you're Arthur Thompson and you're yeah. 103 years old and you're out there playing golf. I mean, my God. Yeah, I mean that's just, amazing. I it's it's unbelievable that you can, you know, like I said, get out of the house. I feel like yeah. it's an accomplishment when you're 103. Let alone go out play 18 holes. I'm assuming it'd be. I'd also be interested to know if he rode in a cart or if he walked. <laughs> I guarantee he rode in a cart that he probably brought with him. Hey, you never <laughs> know. <laughs> Got him out of the house. I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, man. Yeah. Um, so we talk about fitness and golf, and that has become really a, a major topic in the last 20 years of these golfers yeah. becoming truly sculpted athletes. And then you've got your guys that are and gals that at some point they they shift over to, OK, I am now this is my life. I play golf mm -hmm. and I and I work out. Um, but for the normal guy and girl that are that are playing golf. That you don't think about fitness as being an important part of of, um, of getting better at the game, and therefore Thomas Malchow, who we bring into the conversation, uh, he does believe that, and he started uh, Trainfully.com, uh, co-owner and co-founder of Trainfully.com, uh, the future of golf fitness. Repeat guest Thomas, uh, great to see you again. Thanks for coming back on the Stick and Hack program. Well, thank you for having me on. So you heard those stories about these uh, these old timey people, these old golfers, and and you know you, you find a when you're on a course and you see a, an old person out there, uh, you're like, oh my god, I, I would I hope I hope that that's that that's me right down down the road. I hope that I'm out there playing golf and and, and the sport that I love. But a lot has to happen uh, before that can that can happen. You've got to you got to train for it. You've got to put your body in, into a, a position that makes sense. Um, but before we get into the questions about train flow, I do, I, we do want to hit the very important question as our first repeat guest of the stick and act show. Do you find that this time there's more pressure on you to deliver the goods? Yeah. Having listened to this show now for a while, I realized I'm going to have to carry this show. So there's a lot of <laughs> pressure. <laughs> That's the best answer we ever had to a question yeah. ever. This repeat, this repeat <laughs> guest might be a short one. That is the best, my man. Um, all right. So since we did talk the last time, we've had a pandemic and people were stuck in their homes. And it seems like this was really built for you because you train and, and have this platform that is built on fitness at home with the things that you have and, and the no need to go to a gym necessarily. You can do these things where you are um, and you have, have these systems in place. Do you feel that this year was you launched trainfully.com that was an incredible timing for you to teach indoor at your home uh, exercise regimens yeah i think there was obviously an opportunity there we had a lot of people especially in april and may that weren't doing much other than staring at their phone and looking on social media so it was certainly an opportunity to get the message out there that uh, there are things that you could do at home to directly improve or work on your swing. Um, and so unfortunately, you know, obviously a pandemic a pandemic is not something you want to hope for, but it, it was something that we tried to take advantage of. Let me ask you, just for uh, listeners that are new to the program or new to, uh, to you, what is Trainfully.com? What is the future of golf fitness and what do you guys do? Well, our focus is on optimizing posture and giving the foundation for optimum efficiency in your swing. Posture is the foundation of your movement. So if you have good posture, you'll have good movement, and you'll have the essentials for a high-performance golf swing. A lot of people, when they think of golf fitness, they're thinking about you know, Bryson DeChambeau or, or uh, Tiger Woods lifting weights. But our approach is more movement-based. It's something you're talking about previously about um, playing into your 70s and 80s. And that's really what we're striving to do is not just improve the athleticism required for golf, but also improve people's longevity. Thomas, what do you think is the key difference between – and you talked about uh, DeChambeau a bit. Uh, you know, What's the key difference between fitness and – being weird about it, I guess, is the best way to put it is. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question. And that's really what we're trying to break away from. At some point, the, um, 
the fitness industry started chasing the fundamentals of fitness where they started counting repetitions or seeing how quick you could get through a circuit and using that as the primary driver for athletic improvement. But in reality, what we're trying to do when we're working with professional athletes or Olympic athletes, it's all movement based. We want to create a foundation of perfect movement patterns. So unlike, you know, some of the really extreme workouts out there that I know still a lot of golfers are doing a military based workouts that aren't specific to golf or aren't going to improve your golf specific athleticism. When you're taking a look at what's required for golf, you need to work on your flexibility, your mobility and your coordination and do that in a way that enhances your ability to play golf and doesn't start to consume your life. You know, your life with the fitness side of it is supposed to facilitate the golf to allow you to play more often to play better. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be taking over or using up your capacity. Um, there's a theory right now in golf that the long ball is the only way, the only path to victory. And, uh, you're seeing more and more tour players hit the ball so far and so long and that that's all we talk about. That's all announcers talk about. It's, it's, it's all the rage in golf is that long ball. Do you think that a, and, and even for amateurs, we want, we always want to hit the ball further, right? Do you think a strong core or strong swing are the most important for a long ball? Well, this, I don't know what you mean by strong swing. Right. Um, well, me either. Yeah. What, what, yeah. So, I mean, what, what, are, what are we talking about? What's swing, required? Swing really yeah, hard? Like That's hard? The, yeah. Like, like or a like strong a good swing. swing. Like a strong no, swing. No, no. Like technically sound. No, no. Like swing hard. Oh, okay. Like the, the tip that you, you always get, right? From your instructor <laughs> that says swing as hard as yeah, possible. Yeah, they always tell you yeah. that. Right. That's All the what time. I thought. They, said, they always yeah. say. Yeah, sw- they always say swing as hard as, as you hard can. As hard as you possibly can. <laughs> and, and preferably with your eyes shut. That's the tips that I've been given. Am I wrong? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not sure what we to say. find, and and we've we've been doing this now, and this is my approach with athletes for over 20 years now in all different sports. The best way to improve speed. So if we're talking about hitting the golf ball far. We need club head speed, and specifically, we need club head acceleration. But we'll just focus on the speed. The number one attribute of athletes who move the fastest is that they're coordinated. They have the most efficient movement. And so my focus is always first on improving the efficiency of their movement before we we start looking at strength because strength training can quite often create compensation patterns in somebody's movement because they're looking at trying to lift a certain amount of weight. And in order to do that, they're compensating. That compensation will manifest itself into their movement, which is then now part of their swing. And now you have a swing that has compensations in it from your workout. And this sort of goes back to us talking about, you know, people who get worried about their workouts. Well, if you're worried about how much you're squatting, instead of worrying about your movement that's required for your golf swing, then you're going to start building these compensation patterns. So um, the most effective way, the most impact you can make on your club head speed is going to be on becoming more coordinated. Thomas Malchow is the guest here from uh, trainfully.com, a golf fitness expert. So you just talked about efficiency in your swing, and I, I hear you talk about efficiency in your swing a lot, but what, what does that really mean? What, is, what does efficiency in your swing mean? Being efficient means that you're not compensating. And so we'll, we'll draw this all the way back to posture because most of us now, I mean, we're all working at a desk anyway, but now that a lot of us are working at home, we're spending even more time in this you know, forward head posture with rounded shoulders or we get a hunch in our upper back and this is bad posture. Well, if you have bad posture, then you're going to have imbalances in your muscular system, your nervous system and your skeletal system. And those imbalances are going to create altered mechanics in your movement. And if you have altered mechanics in your movement, then you're going to be inefficient. And so when I'm talking about efficiency of movement, it really comes back to improving your posture. If you have good posture, if you stand up straight, like without effort, if that's just your natural posture, then that means that your muscles have good length tension relationships, your joints are all centered, and your reflexes are all how they're supposed to be. And when that's the case, case you're your fastest, you have your most mobility, most coordinated, and you're, you're strongest. So efficiency comes back to being athletic. If you're efficient, 
you have your highest athleticism. So let's, you talked about Tiger a second ago and, and some of these guys that, that um, have brought fitness into their game. And he was probably the most famous athlete to really change the way that he approached his craft. And, but you have your others that have tried to kind of mimic that, but almost to a fault, and that becomes their life. For the average golfer, the average person, none of us, um, I would say 90% of us, don't have the time to, to be weird about it. But there are things that you are, because you're, what you're teaching is very technical, right? It's a, it's a very technical in nature when you're talking about it. But in reality, it's pretty simple. Um, you need to be flexible. You need to be coordinated. You need to work these muscles. You need to do these certain things at 20 minutes a day in order to keep your body in a, in a spot to, to play the game for a long time. So for amateurs is a lot of what you teach and train uh, more preventative in, made, in, in nature for their body so they can play a long time? Or are you truly helping golfers hit the ball farther, hit the ball uh, with more, more club head speed and, and move their bodies the way they're supposed to be, move, be moved in the golf swing? Both. And so that's the real reason why we started Train Fully is we are literally – bringing the training secrets of Olympic and professional athletes to the masses. Um, when I walk into a gym, I see people doing these crazy workouts, trying to lift these crazy amount of weights or doing these circuits and trying to see how quick they can get through the circuit. In reality, that's not how professional athletes train. Professional athletes are trying to build a foundation of perfect movement patterns. And these perfect movement patterns are efficient, just like we just talked about. So if they're efficient, they're fast and they're accurate. And if they're efficient, they also don't um, cause any wear and tear on your joints, or at least less wear and tear on your joints. You're going to have more longevity. So it all comes into the same conversation about if you want to play long and you want to play your best, you have to take care of your posture. If you have good posture, you'll be fast, you'll be coordinated, and your joints will be centered, they'll be congruent, and you won't have any wear and tear. You know, your program, you uh, you worked with athletes of all kinds, world-class a- athlete. I can't talk today. What is wrong with me? <laughs> this is ridiculous. You're just nervous. I, no, he's yeah, very, I'm, I'm, he's very <laughs> nervous. I'm very nervous. It's too much coffee, apparently. I, I don't, I, I, it's ridiculous. It's very you, nervous. <laughs> you work with athletes of all kinds, world-class and just the average person. You know, what, what surprises you the most about working with, with both, with, with world-class athletes and with just the average person? Uh, well, what surprised me most most about the the world class athletes is um, just how well they can compensate, and so and that's really what makes a professional athlete is their ability to compensate. So, if the normal person, if you lack a certain amount of uh, flexibility, say you don't have mobility in a certain joint, and you're moving through, we'll focus on golf, of course. If you're moving through your swing sequence and you run into a restriction in one of your joints, well, you have to compensate around that. Uh, professional golfers, they have the same issue. They'll run into restriction, but the way their nervous system works, and this is just automatic, is their nervous system will find the most efficient way to compensate. And so they can compensate their way out of or around anything, and they do so really efficiently. If you look at, say, Tony Finau or Phil, they don't have good posture. And you would think then because of that, they wouldn't have great mobility, but they're able to just coordinate and move around those restrictions in just the most ideal way that allows them to play at the level they play at. Now, that being said, if they were to work on their posture, they would be even better. And that's sort of our focus is when a professional athlete comes in, we're working on always optimizing their posture, and optimizing their movement because they can always get even better. So for those that want to uh, take the Trainfully program, what can they expect? And, and is this an at-home? Do they need to, to have a gym membership? Can they do uh, exercises for many, many years? Can they get this program in their, in their minds and then just continue it uh, for years to come so they can be like Arthur Thompson and be 103 years old and, and play, play golf? Which, by the way, do you know yeah. Arthur? Did you know yeah. Arthur Thompson? No, he's no, 1972. I, I didn't, know. 103, 1972, never mind. I, he was from Did Canada. You ask him that because he's from Canada. He's from Canada. I don't yeah, know. He's from Canada. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> How the hell am I supposed to know? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> no, our, our igloos were too far apart. I, I, never <laughs> <met them. laughs> uh, I forget my I forgot my question because I think I just wanted to get my joke in there. Uh, my my question <laughs> my question was: Is this something that somebody can take, learn, study, 
and continue on so they can play golf or whatever sport they play for uh, for a long, long time. Yeah, it's a home program. You can do it at the gym, of course, but it, it's a home program, and we provide the link. You need a foam roller, a couple bands, um, not very much equipment at all, and it's just all available from Amazon. Um, it's done at home. It takes 20 minutes a day, three days a week, and it's focused on working on improving the three most common compensation patterns that occur in not just the general public, but just in humans everywhere. So there's upper body dysfunction, there's lumbopelvic hip complex dysfunction, and there's lower extremity dysfunction. And each one of these dysfunctions has its own corresponding set of compensation and patterns in the muscles, joints, and reflexes. And it sounds very complicated, and, and there's a lot of, you know, I guess, rocket science that goes into it. But it's really simple stuff that you can do, and you just hit play on the device, and you follow me, and I show you which muscles to release and lengthen and other ones to shorten. And um, it's really simple. Anybody can do it. Well, speak for yourself, Thomas. <laughs> Mike and I... <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> Mike and I have talked about it though, and um, this is this is something that once you once you start and you get into it, um, it doesn't take a lot of time. But I think where where do you think the barrier is for people in their in their midlife, right, forties and fifties? What do you think the biggest barrier is for them to say, you know what, uh, I don't I don't have time, I don't have the resources, I don't care. What do you hear people say, and then? What, when does that, that switch flip for, for uh, most of, the, of your clients? The, the switch flips when they can't play golf anymore. That's really when, when it starts taking away from the ability to play golf or I hear also I can't play with my kids or my daughter asks me how my back's feeling today. Those are the things that start to you know, cause person to realize, okay, I need to make some changes in my life. Um, and I think that the fitness industry is really an intimidating thing to get into. It looks like it's a lot of work. If you go into a gym, you see all these muscle bound people doing these crazy things. And um, so it's not something that's easy to get into. And there's a lot of mis misinformation out there as well. So doing it at home and these things have an immediate impact on your, on your health. And this is all science based. And this is the same stuff that I've been doing with, uh, professional athletes for 20 years and with a professional athlete if they become injured you know you get you're out of a job you can't it's their livelihood right they need to feed their families and so this is all very safe it's it's proven with the highest level anybody can do it and um, usually people notice the difference not only say if they have a stiff back or a sore back that usually starts to dissipate within a week or two and they start noticing the impact uh, in their game, usually within two or three weeks as well. So this uh, last question, Thomas Malchow, uh, will predict whether or not you're on the show for a third time. Okay. <laughs> Am I, Adam Grubb, the hack, a lost cause for fitness at this stage? No. No. Nobody's a lost cause there for fitness. Is. And again, I think that the way – people approach fitness and, and again this has happened with a lot of those high intensity workouts and by the way those workouts are not beneficial to golfers like when when tiger was doing the navy seal workouts and this is getting quite technical but there's three you want to train your energy system right so there's three main energy systems we have the anaerobic lactic system we have the anaerobic alactic system we have the aerobic system golf takes place in the anaerobic alactic system and the aerobic system those high intensity, crazy workouts that everybody's scared of, those are in the anaerobic lactic system, which is not used in golf. So you don't even need to worry about them. You are far better off as a human being and an athlete for, in golf of working on your posture, doing some simple stretches, some very basic exercises to improve your movement, improve the mobility of your joints. You get a lot more bang for your buck with that. You'll feel better. You'll increase your capacity and you'll play better. Uh, I would have used that advice a while ago. I played uh, tennis for the first time in years and uh, blew out both my Achilles. To, uh, I think I stretched both of my uh, hamstrings. Uh, I broke my kneecap and I pulled uh, eight ribs. And I played one set. I played one set. Can you pull a, can you pull a yeah. rib? I pulled eight of them. Mike, pulled eight ribs. 
Um, Thomas Malchow, thank you so much. Trainfully.com is the site. Go to it. He is now a official member perks partner of Stick and Hack. Um, so go to Stick and Hack to the member perks program and uh, get discounts and deals specifically for all brands across the United States, but one specifically, Trainfully uh, Canada, I guess. So we got to go throw Canada in there as right. well. Trainfully.com. We're, world, we're worldwide. We are indeed. International. We're, we're international. <laughs> if, you're, if you're connected to the United States, you're international. Um, so, uh, Thomas, thank you again for being on the program. You have an incredible program uh, of fitness there, and you're just a, you're a great a great dude. And, and anybody that can watch you and, and understand uh, this program is not uh, designed for uh, for the weirdos. It's designed just so you can be Arthur Thomas and, and Thompson and play it when you're 103 years old. Unless you're Mike, then I guess just whenever it's over, it's over. 75. Right. I'm 75. Done. He's, he's out 75, the door. I'm out. 75 is out the door. All right, so uh, <laughs> we now move into in or out. Thomas, do you want to play this game with us? Yes. All right. Uh, the, the game here is in or out of our foursome. So it's you, me, and Mike, and then we have to vote if this person's in or out of our foursome. And the uh, wait, can I vote? Can I vote one of you guys out? Ooh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Well, we get to vote first, Thomas, <laughs> and okay. we have voted that it's you. Uh, okay. no, so, so the the three of us, and we have uh, we have a fourth, and we are going to go with the category talk show hosts. Okay, these are talk show hosts, uh, past and present, specifically. American talk show host. Yeah, American talk show host. So let's, let's, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, ready? Here we go. In or out? Jimmy Fallon. Mike. In. in. Thomas. Out. Out. Agreed. Uh, he's too goofy for yeah. me. He, he would, he, by, the third, like by the third him. hole, <sighs> by the third hole, it'd be like, okay, chief. We yeah, get it. Yeah, it's enough. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> uh, Conan O'Brien. Out. In. In. I knew that. I knew that was what was going to happen there. I knew it. <laughs> Conan's great. Conan is, in fact, if Conan you don't. Conan annoys me. Why? He just does. If you listen, to, he's got an incredible uh, podcast. It's uh, right up there with ours um, as far as <laughs> listenership is concerned. <laughs> you guys should have him on. We should have him on. We haven't even he thought won't. about that. He ain't going to come on now. I'm going to write. No, he is. Right. He probably will. Yeah, <laughs> he probably will. I'm going to write that down. And then, Conan he'll, and then he'll berate me. Um, <laughs> all right, David Letterman. <laughs> Absolutely in. In. And fellow Ball State alum. Yeah. And and just Indiana alum or yes. Indiana native. Yes. Uh, Letterman's one of my one He's of my heroes. My hero. Yeah. Mine too. So was he on the show before Conan? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um Kelly Clarkson. Out. Out. Oh, guys, that is rude. Very rude. Out. I don't even have a reason. <laughs> 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 All right, fair enough. Uh, Jay Leno. Out. 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 Oh, God. See? Perfect. You can't perfect. have perfect. Conan on it. And, yeah. yeah. Right. I've never been. I've never, oh, been, I've never been. Me a, either. I'm not guy. a big fan of Leno. Yeah, he'd be wearing denim. Leno, yeah. He would w yeah. look out of place on the court. He'd show up in a weird yeah, vehicle. Show, show, show up yeah. in a weird car in <laughs> denim and go, hey, that's hey, all, hey, guys, all he would talk about. Hey, yeah. guys, you guys ready to play some golf? He would just talk about old classic cars all the time. Oh, God. The worst. Whatever. Johnny Carson. In. 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 No, no conversation necessary there. It's the greatest. Duh. Uh, Ellen. In for me. Out. Nah, this is a toss up. I'm going to say, I'm going to say in, I'm, I'm going to let the last yeah. six months, you know, just kind of escape me. I like Ellen. I, I like Ellen too. I think Ellen's, I think she'd be, the I think she'd be fine. Man. Right. Well, nah, that's a little aggressive. No, whatever. She's fine. Producer Shane, can you have your own talk show, please? God, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. My God. He's just back. He's having his own podcast behind and, the know. scenes. <laughs> Nobody's asking him. Uh, Stephen Colbert in, in, in. John Stewart in, in for sure. All right, I guess. Larry King. Hello. Wait, 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 wait. What? Oh, why you mean you guess? I don't know. In. He's he's a little he's a little, just a little much for me. I like John Stewart of the early Daily Show. Then he became kind of like. Uh, Bill Marge is a little too political for me. And, and okay. a little, a little what, bit too what Trevor Noah then? I love Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah's in. Sure. He's not on this list, but apparently you can just make up your own names, Thomas, in the middle of the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's he's two time he's a two time guest, man. He can do what he wants. Yeah. Uh Larry Larry King. Bob Saget. Oh my God. Thomas, I'm gonna beg you <laughs> to stop naming naming people. Bob Saget. So in. Good. I'll say Bob Saget's in. Yeah. yeah. He's not even a talk show host. No. I didn't no. Think so. he, no. Thomas is Does literally he have one? He's, no. he might. Well, they're giving everybody talk show hosts. Thomas is I mean, now just naming people that he knows in Hollywood. 
That's what's yeah. happening right People now. People I've seen on TV. Yeah, yeah, Jared Leto. Sure, why not? What is happening, Thomas? Uh, Larry King. Uh, yeah. He's out for me. Uh, he's because he might bring what's the the rapper with him? Snoop Dogg. <laughs> what? Are they friends? I don't know what's even <laughs> happening. They this will be the last time we have a guest do the game with us. I can uh, tell you that it's much. Fine. <laughs> I think Larry King's out for me. Larry though. King is out, and Larry yeah. King is is speaking of 103. Yeah, is he alive still? <laughs> I think he. I think he is. is he, he doesn't know it. Oh, okay. But he is alive. I wasn't yeah. completely sure if he was still alive. <laughs> But. All right, the last one here of in or out talk show hosts of our foursome, Wendy Williams. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> oh, out. <laughs> Thomas knows who's, who should it I is. Should I know who that is? Uh, you shouldn't. Uh, I mean, I don't know. She yeah. has. She's. Um, she has her own talk show. When's it on? Uh, at ten a.m. Right. Yeah, that's right? why I don't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's why. That's why you don't know. I don't Wendy know. Williams is out for me. I find her incredibly. Annoying. Yet she is very popular and has a, has a, a show that's way more successful than this one. So well, yeah, I mean, what the hell? So well, uh, it's how you measure success. Well, she's rich and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Yeah. Thomas Malchow from uh, Trainfully.com, golf fitness expert. Uh, we appreciate uh, you, sir, on the program yet again. Go to stickandhack.com and to the Member Perks program as a member. And uh, go get a discount on trainfully.com. He's graciously allowed uh, our members to uh, take part in his program at uh, a little reduced rate. So uh, we appreciate that. More uh, from Thomas. Hopefully, maybe on round three, Thomas will be in a better mood. Yeah. Because he's a real downer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. Good to see you, buddy. Be good, all right? Thanks, Thomas. Thank you. All right, there he goes. Thomas Mouchow, Uh <laughs> Show brought to you by Yada Golf. No more breaking, bending, or losing golf tees made from high-grade impact-resistant polymers. One pack of Tilo's Tees will last the average golfer an entire season. Go to our member perks page to get exclusive deals and discounts from great brands around the country like Yada Golf and others. Mike, uh, that was a fun show. It was. I enjoyed it. It was fantastic. I don't typically. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this a higher grade than the first appearance. I oh think yeah, this is good. I think I will too. It was great. Just because he's still on. Yeah. Remember so last time he he's never he's staring he never, at us right now, and he never never even got off last time, did he? <laughs> yeah. He's uh, pull him back up if you don't mind, Thomas. Uh, don't you have a day job? Hey, uh, <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> That's it. That's all we needed to hear. All right, uh, Stick and Hack Show. Uh, Mike, proud of you. Have a great proud day. Proud of you, man. All right, see you later. Peace out, guys. The Stick and Hack Show is now over. Subscribe, rate, comment, and tell your friends. You are now free to go about your day.